You see Yake, Harris, Rando, then Sullivan, Hughes, Lund, Maktoff, Marenko, and Bristian. And we're underway. Nolan acting like he was going to catch it. Austin will make the play to end the inning. So a day after stranding 11, the Zags leave a couple of runners on base. I level the hitters. That one got good art. Hogs get a free base runner. Smoked in the center for a base hit. Goodhart will turn third. The throw is offline. The Razorbacks score first. Boy, that ball almost got a piece of Lardner. An absolute rocket right back through the box by Christian Franklin. Watch how close this comes to hitting the pitcher. I mean, that is right by his head. That's a scary sight for a pitcher. And you saw... Brishton charging the throw off a little bit. No chance to get good. Maybe moving to New York or San Francisco might be a little difficult. Yake has to hit to the same spot. Into right. Off and going is Yake. Opitz from his knees with a good throw, but that bag was stolen on Nolan, and it gets away from Moore, and going to third is Yake. Yeah, Moore trying to be a little too quick with that tag. I think it was a really good jump. Throw from the knees and good heads up play. Yeah. And we're tied on the base hit from Harris. Two out single, a stolen base, an air, and another base hit. Game is tied at one. That's the first earned run that Nolan has allowed this season. Yeah, you can see he was frustrated really hung that breaking ball. That was about belt high that Harris hit. And good hitters don't miss hanging pitches, and Harris aggressive against the big left-hander. That's up the middle. And through as Opitz has his fifth base hit of the season. Just two base hits, both singles today. Make it three base hits, all singles as Austin pokes one into center. Already squaring is Moore. He will pull the ball back, back, and there's the base hit in the left field. Oh, Pitts is going to score. Gonzaga wouldn't take the out, and the Hawks have taken the lead. Uh, that was a perfect piece of hitting. I love the conversation that Dave Van Horn had with Robert Morris, freshman. He said, you know what? They're moving all over the place. If you can just put the bat on the baseball and find a hole, there's all kinds of holes with infielders shifting and moving. Just a great job and great call by Dave Van There's the bunt. And it was misplayed by Lardner. And the Razorbacks lead it 3-1. to one. Well, the ball was almost stopped rolling. That's the right play by Lardner to bare hand that ball because it's not rolling very quick, very hard. But, again, he I think he took a little peek, maybe almost to second base. It's on this inning. Nobody out. Kerstad's going to bunt again. They're going to make Lardner field one. Safe at first. There's the speed that Kerstad has developed in this offseason. I tell you what, a season ago, he's not safe. He, he's out. But, Troy, come get the yeah. ball if you're Lardner. I think he was overthinking that. You can see his feet really get choppy toward the end as he goes down and yep. picks that ball I think you're up. Right. I think he was almost a little nervous about how to field it. And it propels away from Lund. Another free base, another run as Robert Moore touches. Boy, the wheels are coming off the wagon for the Zags in the fifth. You're talking about a guy in, in Lardner that was absolutely cruising. 
And the thing that Lund does for people that keep foul balls. Lifted to center. Bristian back. Webb will tag. He is going to score. And the Razorbacks have tacked on run number five. Quality at bat by Christian Franklin. Can do anything you can do to drive a run. And a walk to begin. The Zags sixth. Finally, some bodies down in the Arkansas bullpen. They gets Marshall Denton. Pop up and a strikeout in his ledger. That one lifted the left towards the bullpen and way gone. That ball was absolutely destroyed by Hughes. And sometimes that happens. After you walk somebody, you're like, I'm going to get ahead of this guy. I'm going to throw one right over the dish. And Hughes, he did not miss it. That ball, it almost got up into the, the containers that are behind the, the bleachers up there. Boy, he hit it and he knew it. You can see the reaction of Webb in left field. He doesn't move. That yeah. ball is crushed. Hit a long. Casey is a switch hitter, but it's something he's been doing since an early age. That ball driven to right, back to the fence, and it is in play. Sullivan may have kept it in long enough to give Opitz a chance for three bases and a triple to begin the inning. Well, there aren't many triples hit in Baumwalker Stadium. And Casey Opitz is going to let his teammates know about it. He's a catcher. They're not supposed to be able to run. That ball was, I think, it robbed. Sullivan with that height, I think he kept that one in. G. Ground ball headed to right. Base hit. Another run in. The throw to third is late, and Moore will scamper down to second base. Wow, really heads up play by, first by Cole Austin. He read that play, thought he had the opportunity to go from first to third. And then as soon as Robert Moore saw that ball go past the cutoff man, he was going down. You see that ball is hit just out of the reach of Marenko. And look at Moore right here. He's excited. Just plays the way the Royals play the game. That one spanked to right. Sullivan will get there to make the catch. Austin's going to tag and score. Moore will tag and go to third. And the Razorbacks keep adding on. Well, Benjamin, it's just a culture that the Royals have, yeah. and I think it, it starts from the top, and that's from uh, his, his dad as well as the, the head coach and just throughout that organization. Just I don't know right now. You know I'm not a scout. There's a roller to the right side. This throw is going to come home, and how about the scoop by Lund for an out at the plate? But I think what you do when you watch him, and, you know, I've talked to scouts, and I was talking to one yesterday with the Giants, and just, you know, they, they love his ability at the plate. Just his. It's it's really a, a something. I've, I've never seen anybody know their team better than Dave Van Horn does. And a lot of this one racing over his brisk, and he can't make the play. It's behind him. Now let's see how far Franklin can run. He's around second base and holds there as Makdoff gets it back into the infield. It's a double for Franklin. Well, sometimes it's better to. Kind of get jammed a little bit and hit one on the screws, and that got in on Franklin just a bit, and it really died out there. I think Brishton thinks he's got a chance on it. Maktoff with a poor angle, and he's lucky that Franklin ends up only at second base. He almost played that ball into a triple. In the seventh inning. Oh, here's a blast. Hope it's got every stitch of this one. Way back there, Sullivan. It is gone. A home run for Casey Opitz. And the Razorbacks tech on two more. It is nine to three here in the seventh. Boy, have a day, Casey Opitz. Singled in the fifth, tripled, almost homered in the sixth, and he takes that one yard. No doubt off the back wall, hit the hog. And he knew he got it. Great extension, and that's what Dave Van Horn said about Casey Opitz this season, Benjamin. He said, you know, He's probably not going to hit 20 home runs, but he has a lot more power. He's a guy that's put on 25 pounds as Blake Adams. Mm -hmm. This one hit off the knuckles. A little squibber to Moore. He's got it. And the Hogs win it. 9-3, to three, the final score. It took a little while, Troy. But with the small ball and eventually the big bats, Arkansas uh, picks up their fifth win of the season. Yeah, good quality win. Gonzaga is a qu very quality team.
out of the WCC. And again, Arkansas is going to take it. Offensively, they woke up, struggled a little bit more on the map.